Hi, this is Gilbert S. with the Unnamed Game Co. And this is Jordan T. with the Zone Fighter Games. So we actually had a, a fourth episode originally recorded, um, but then we uh, threw it out because it just wasn't working. It was no good. I mean, if you want to put it like that, sure, why not? I mean, like we, like we, we were fine, but just I, there was a lot going on. Yeah. So today we are going to talk. Uh, we're gonna do some of our game design talk because we don't really, we didn't do that in the last couple. Jordan is going to yawn a lot and make me uh, yawn too. No. <laughs> don't do it to me, man. Don't do it to me. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> when it's infectious. Anyways, um, I keep this camera is all screwed up. Okay, there it goes. Cause I was like, it's mo it moved itself, and I was like, why did it move itself? And I was like, because initially, there it goes. Yes, there it goes. I was supposed to be able to lean and be able to look right at the camera and be like, hello, camera, how are you today? <laughs> Sorry, I had to adjust it, and we're doing it live because, you know, that's how we roll up in the unnamed Game Co. Uh, anyways, so we're going to talk about dice, and we're going to talk about what, like, the type of game systems uh, we would use certain dice for, or that, you know, talk about dice systems. Because, you know, there are D4 systems, D6, I don't see no too many, too many D4 systems. There are D6, D8s, D12s, D20s, D10s. Did I miss one? D100s. Mm. Good old percentiles. Oh, yeah. So we will start going from D4 and up. D4 is the most, the, the 1 in 25 rule. You really have no... There's no way of hiding it, and I think I've every time I've seen a D4 system, it's really either way too easy to succeed or way too easy to fail. That's why I've uh, I've actually been enjoying uh, Taitonomaki's Heltrop Four. Feel free to is, uh, tell people about that. <laughs> it's it's. Yeah, it kind of is uh, taking the indie scene by storm. Kind of huge in the in the um, right now, but it is it is a like a dice pool game for D fours. Let me actually uh, let me actually bring it up because it's been a minute since I've read it. I'll I'll be straight with you folks, but um, he sorry they it's that um basically set out to make a bottomed out super easy to learn super easy to dev game for people who were like trying to get into game design and they wanted to make something for people who just either didn't know what they're doing or didn't have a place to start um, and just they created something super cool. Um, uh, like I'll, I'll, re I'll read you the first section right here. For, for a stat-driven game, simply assign a number between 1 and 5 to each stat. When that stat comes into play, roll that many D4s, take the highest roll. For a token-based game, players can gain and expend tokens, rolling as many D4s as tokens they expend, take the highest roll. So, and it works on a, uh, on a scaling, on a scale of success. So, uh, one is an absolute failure and four is an absolute success with a uh, two and three being partial failure and partial success, uh, respectively. So it, it really is just, just that easy. And if they made it so popular, they, they didn't even try to make it popular they're just like i'm gonna host game jam and i think at last count it was something upwards of like i want to say it was like 
almost like over 100 games. Wow. I, I, I could be completely wrong, and that could be much higher and much lower. But they made it, dropped it, and people just took to it. Um, how many of those people were um, experienced designers or designers who wanted to try something different or people who just had never made a game before in their lives? Um, it was super cool. I hope there was a lot of people who didn't, uh, hadn't made one before because that would have been a great experience to try it out and see if it's something Absolutely. you... Absolutely. Yeah. And so my so, so basically it's a dice pool system. You roll X amount of dice and then just take the highest roll. That, that's the thing. It can be a dice pool system because this is an SRD and those rules are uh, in flux and can be changed. That's... Interesting. Very. I did not read the... I was not part of the Caltrap thing. I heard about it running through the, the scene for a while. And I have a tendency... I think that was when I was... That was back in, like, January, right? In December? I, I believe so. It kind of spiked up around January. Yeah. I, we were in the middle of 31 Days of Games. So... You were. We had... We had zero energy left. <laughs> we were we were so spent that the idea of looking at anything in the community was like, you need us to do what? <laughs> you, were, you were busy uh, hitting out banger after banger after banger. I know they were banger after banger after banger, but we were well, sure. Some, some of them were pretty cool. And uh, the, the much like the 8-track tape, the world will realize their mistakes. Uh, you know what? The, we went started at D four. We actually should have started no dice. <laughs> That's mm, you're right. No dice is always a it's always an interesting option. Yeah, um, we'll get to that one at the end. But we should have gone and started with no dice, then to D four, then to D six. But we'll go to no dice at the end, and we'll talk about that we'll one. Come back around. We'll, we'll make come a, back around to that. we'll make a swing at it. I don't know very many D four games. Um, personally. Uh, oh. Core is the biggest one that I know of. Yeah, and it's an SRD though, so it's yeah. There, I don't think there's a big game system out there that's like we use D4s. I know I've seen mm -hmm. D4s used in a number of like, in like a number of smaller things, but I've never really seen it in like a big system. I I remember something on, again on Geek and Sundry. This was when they were trying to grab any straw they could to try to repeat Critical Role. Um, which is really more of like the parent company's fault, not not any of the talent on the channel. Um, I think they wanted to do something with the expanse that ended up being um, a D four game, but I don't remember what happened with it. I yeah, that makes sense. I have no idea. Uh, D four D. Yeah, and we'll get to them later, but the, the, the multiples of fours have the hardest time getting into games. If we <laughs> and it starts off with E four and for some and, and people, you know, loathe the D four because it's also like the worst thing to step on in the universe. Which um, I do love that that is a um a bit of a, a trend right now to kind of change the design of a D four. Yeah. I've seen so, the, the dreidel look the the spinning top look that one is been pretty popular I'm, I'm pretty into that i'm into the um it is a it's got two like they come to like points on the ends and then the uh it's just a box in the middle with the four so no even if you if it lands on the points it just rolls to one side um it's pretty good yeah i've seen like a diamond shape which is pretty neat yeah the the the, the biggest issue with a d4 is it doesn't roll it if you throw a d4 it just literally lands and it's it's anticlimactic as well if you're like oh i mean if you're trying to roll d4s you're when you're rolling it it's not it's not rolling around the table and you're like oh no what could it be it's there it goes yeah there's no there's no tension yeah there's no like tension like, yeah which which i think is why it's like it's the magic missile spell like you already know the spell's gonna hit so you're just like Three. A lot. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> Plus all of my modifiers. Yeah. Um, no, yeah, I 100% agree. And I, I wish there would be something that would... I hope maybe the Caltrap would have, will inspire a generation of D4 
people that will make the next big D4 game. Um, because I'm not going to make a D4 game. I might. Who knows? Yeah, but... Uh, I, don't, I, don't know what, I don't know where the moods will take me. I mean, I'll write a D4 game, but I don't think I'm going to utilize it as, like, a primary game system to, like, run an entire thing. Just yeah, because yeah. the mathematics of it, to me, are problematic. Because, like, it's a 1 in 25 chance. And, like... Yeah, it would, it would definitely be a vanity project, just to say I did it. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's just not good math. Like, there's, there's lower... Pro- yeah, when you're thinking of like design, you also have to consider like yes, you could roll a one in twenty four chance, one one in one in one in tw- one ugh, one in four chance of getting the number you want. But the probabilities, you know, the, all the probabilities aside, it is possibilities that are the problem because you right. just don't have a wide enough range of what could it possibly be. Some things are too wide. Like, there was that one time there was a game coming out, coming out that wanted to utilize a D1000 system. <laughs> it failed. It was a cool thing back in a couple of years ago. Um, they were like, I, what I, are you... That just, yeah. just seems like a vanity. Yeah, it was a terrible idea. And as soon as people started hearing about it, they, were, they just trashed it. And it got, like, horribly... Uh, it's a, you, overly convoluted, overly complicated, and it was just one of those, what are you doing? Um, and I think they raised a bunch of money, too, which is crazy. Or they spent a bunch of money, too. Um, but yeah, my issue with D4 is that it lacks the probability. It lacks it lacks pro- a possibility, not probability. And it also lacks probability, and also the fact that, you know, you just don't have enough variety of possibilities. Um, right. so, which I think, I think is interesting with Caltrop. Or because it is a dice pool game, so the the magic D six. This is D six is what you could call the indie dice. I, I would I would call it the indie dice. Like I think uh, I think most games could could come up with a reason to have a D six in them if they really wanted to. Like, yeah, it's not hard. But as for games that are generally the core is a D six. Um, you look so tired. Oh, oh. It's the heat out here. Is it? Oh yeah, it's gonna be a heat wave in this in this uh, week. Um, but yeah, D six is considered to be the anti D and D. Like it's the dice every. It's considered the common person's dice. It's the one where you have just a bunch laying around. Everybody's got a pair of D sixes. I got a pair of D sixes sitting on my desk right now too. I will show my pair. I literally have like an alt and full of d6s. And it's it's the it's the it's the indie dice. Like the d6 is the dice that is that commands the indie scene, in my opinion, because it was the idea that, well, d20 is a special dice you have to buy, but a d6, everybody's got a d6. Anybody can pick yeah. up a game with a d6 and start playing this game because that's what we make d6s about. And I I'm all for that. That is that is a perfectly good reason to build your game around a d6 is accessibility like you could go to like a dollar store and pick up a thing of dice you could go to walmart and pick up a thing of dice you could go to your grocery store get a gallon of milk a notebook some paper and if you're lucky dice like yeah like bicycle just releases them in like a pack of like five and if failing that you could just go find your old copy of Monopoly. Yep, and that's what a lot of people like. That's the reason D six is such a dominant thing, is that it is, it is the every person's dice. It is the reason that like it, it's accessibility. It makes it easy. It's, it's the idea that when you're sitting with a group of friends and and the the notion of like more narrative driven games. The idea that we could pick up the game, start running it, start playing it, without much pro, you know without much prep it's it's the the all of that is this sort of central yeah, you're core just, yeah you're, you're just out for end there yeah and, um, and the d6 that, allows you to do that you could show go to a cabin one night find a box of monopoly and pull out a game and start running the game right then and there and that's very little that's prep. kind of 
I kind of want that to be our viewer challenge. Is go find all of the D sixes not currently in your dice deck. Like, how many do you have? Yeah, and you'll find that you have a ton. And even in like, even in board games when they're not wanting to do dice because you know the Euro style of board gaming is don't do dice. The the one times that they do do dice, it's a D six. Like, so that's just the general consensus like we're gonna do d6s and and yeah i think that's an interesting yeah. thing and i mean you know it's also to say that you know d6 is also uh, gambling dice um i mean in many countries around the world just have dice um and a lot of uh, uh like a lot of asia russia china um england of course they do have six-sided dice yeah you can, you can buy. You can get a bunch of dice from. You can get a bunch of d sixes from playing. Uh, from mahjong ma, ma, ma sets, mahjong sets have d sixes. Uh, you yeah. can get d sixes from. What's that? Yahtzee. Yeah. Yeah. So they're just, they're everywhere. <laughs> um, it literally is like a handful of dice. Like it's it's nuts. Moving on, I think we're good with D6s because we all are aware of that. D8s, and I think we should put the umbrella and just say D12 at the same time because these two are going to get paired together, and it is the multiples of fours, and for some reason, D8s and D12s get no love. <laughs> like, no love. They don't. They don't. Which is why um, I'm, I'm totally just going to, like, point at myself and say me i did this um is this self I, I is this self-promotion jordan yes do it do it self-promote i uh i did create a oh, that was d12 actually oh crud it's been a while since i looked at this um it could work with a d8 i uh way back today it was actually the first um the first instance of game design i ever did was I was also uh, one of the people who was like, but what if Dark Souls, an RPG table game? Um, so I created a D12 based system where you have a. Uh, it, it's, it's the joke of, you know, this game has two stats, but um, you are pushing a slider um, so that the more you do one action, the easier it gets. But when time comes for you to do the other action, it's harder because you're trying to stop yourself from basically move, moving to one thought process too much. Um, yeah. That that happens in math too. Yes. Uh, not, as, not as robust as math, so I will admit, but... Um, not bad for something I thought of in two days uh, while I was uh, not sleeping. Two days while you were zoning yeah. out? We just lost 10 viewers that way. <laughs> we sure did. Um... I, I, it's silly that I actually believe that we had 10 viewers. We just lost seven bots. Um, but yeah, D8 and D12, I do like. I just, they're just, they're also very unexciting as dice because for the OCD people in the room, they're like, oh, it's not a 10 or a 20 or a 100. So it's not an even number. And it, it's. Right. Uh, and they're, they're weird looking. They're weird looking dice. Yeah. They are weird looking dice. I mean, the D12 looks like a, just a, a bigger version of, like, a, it looks like a D20, pretty much, at it that does. stage. And the D, D, D8 just looks like two D4s, like, that were glued together. And in all honesty, if you want to just redo the D4, just have it have the same amount of odds. Just go 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4. Then you've got it. <laughs> you could, uh, you could... Turn a D twelve into a D six as well. Yeah, that's true. Yep. Uh, a lot of a lot of people, and this is I call it market research, but really it's just every now and again I'll throw up a poll just to see how people are feeling of like what is the best dice. Um, 
and they a lot of the time will pick the D12. Because they want to give the D12 love? uh, uh, Yep. And and it uh, it can be, it's one dice that can be used as three different dice if if, uh, masked correctly. On top of that, it makes a better noise uh, when rolled. So you don't actually roll a D20, you just roll like a handful of D12s and they just funk louder. So when you're just sitting there and you're looking like, "Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm," and like you didn't actually roll anything. So it's a little good to scare players with. Yeah, the thing, the question is, is D two the, the, the there's a debate a while back, which is is two D sixes, which I'm holding in my hand, two D sixes equivalent mm-hmm. to one D twelve. They are not. They absolutely are not. Why? So other other than the fact that your uh, your your like the actual odds of something coming up on the, on two D six versus one D twelve are different. So obviously the lowest thing the lowest increment you could roll on two D six is two. Um, the the average roll of two D six uh, on a single six out of die is three. The average roll on a twelve is six. So while yes, mathematically that does edge out, there's so many differences, like they could collide with each other, like there's so many little variations. Uh, the edges that you, you use on, on a die do affect its rolling. Uh, on top of that, uh, go, go to Vegas and just tell the guy at the craps table, uh, hey, I want to roll this 1d12 opposed to 2d6. I, I, I don't think that's going to go over well for you. Yeah. The the thing about it is is that I've um, mathematically speaking, mm-hmm. I believe it's not three is the average on a d six. Mm-hmm. It's actually three point five. Well, you can't roll three and a half on d six. You can't, but the average roll you can roll on a d six is a three point is three point five. But right. mathematically, the number skews to seven, and then average on a twelve is a six point five. It's actually the number plus point five because it tends towards on the upper. So it's like the middle line. But to put that into context, if you're mathematically looking at two d12s, it skews two d6 is skews at a higher number than a d12 does. So you're mathematically expected to do better on two d12 due to two d6s than one d12. Jordan, you're 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 so choppy out there. How about now? No, yeah, it's fine. You you just one day upgrade your internet. It's 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 because of the heat. The heat is making it uh, it's making the internet hard to 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 pump into my place. Is that Um, really how the internet works? Yes, uh, the heat of the uh, tubes to to close up, and then when it gets colder, they expand, so there's more internet. Got it. So we're going to have a heck of a time to recording these in the summer. Right. Oh, that's going to be... Personally, for where I live, is uh, 90% of the year. Yeah. That's going to be fun. Yep. Oh, well. Anyways. Um, it's okay. We'll have Choppy Jordan for most of the summer. We'll make a joke out of it. Dome arigato, Mr... I can't say that. That's five seconds, right? Joe Bato. Uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think the D12 is an interesting system. I think it has a lot of possibilities. I think the reason that people don't use the D12, and which is a strange thing, strange reason, is that they it's so close to the D20. Like, you're already at the D12, so you're just like, oh, well, why not just go to the D20? Yeah, um, why not? It's the, um, it's the why not rule. And I think that same reasoning is why people go from D8 to D10. It's the why not rule. Like, you're at D8, why don't you just make it an even D10? And do a 5.5 average and a 10.5 average on a D20. Let's go to D10s, the infamous D10. The D10, which is be- which it really is, belongs to the White Wolf system. <laughs> it really does. The, for, as, for, as much as, uh, for as much as the D20 is the vaunted icon of Dungeons & Dragons, the D10 absolutely belongs to White Wolf. 
I, I will hear arguments for it belonging to Call of Cthulhu. These are two things that are hurt. But Cthulhu uses more of a, of a percentile system, right? Correct. So you could technically do a D100 with Call but, of Cthulhu. <laughs> The thing about it is the reason that it belong. I make the argument that it belongs more with with D with White Wolf is because it's it's pool systems. This is correct. You couldn't. This is absolutely correct. Yeah, while you could replace the Cthulhu dice with a D one hundred on a technicality, you couldn't do that with the White Wolf system. And there's more dice in the White Wolf system, and there's more things you can do with the White Wolf dice. Like there's exploding tens, and there's there's you know multiple tens and things that they did that are very infamous for the d and it's a pool system so that means yeah. that they don't they don't touch anything outside of that it is just d tens d ten mm -hmm. craziness and the uh, that is the only downside i will say about from, from everything hearing about white wolf um that's the only downside that you need several d tens which so already you need to go to a top and then your shop needs to have a pack of D10s, or because because there is has been a spike in the community, there there have been just like Vampire the Masquerade ten sets where one of them is already like your Blood Lie or, or whatever, which is which is fine. So that's great, but you have to know it exists and put a look for it. Yeah. Which from my marketing brain is like eh, is already. A, a little bit of a thing because that's that's actually jumps you have to make, but yeah, want to make that jump. Pe people do want to make that jump. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, White Wolf firmly, in my opinion, owns the D ten. So we should go on, move on to the what? Who firmly owns the D twenty? I I can't. It's on the tip of my tongue. It's. It's alliterative. Um, Pathfinder. Faces and monsters. That's it. Pathfinder. Uh, you're, right. you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Pathfinder. That, that's the one. Numenera. Wait. It, there is a D20 in Numenera. Yeah, there is. <laughs> Sa Savage. The, 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 Savage Worlds. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> three, three is the rule of comedy, and I, I feel like we've fill that role did we um, um i don't know if the rules of comedy are because i'm not a comedian i'm a i'm a i'm a game designer dang it i am both <laughs> okay good because i if you 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 do the color commentary i'll be the straight man he's making it uh, it didn't land it's i would i would love to do that for a game like to be play-by-play -play commentators on a game just there's, like there's there's something so hilarious about getting that like temp like the the tempo of like golf announcing for an AD game. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. It would be, it would go something like um the bugbear is currently trying to roll a 20. He needs a 20 in order for him to be able to get a critical enough roll to save the party. He's winding up. Here he goes. And he hit a one. Oh. Oh, even with his bonus, it, uh, the DM's making a calling. Yes. He's making him roll on the punishment table. Ooh, that's Oof. Oh my gosh, look at what he rolled. He just rolled a D100 on the punishment table. He just rolled a D100 on the punishment table. And, and a beholder Wait. appeared. A beholder. Oh, no. This is going to be a party oh. wipe. This is going to be like the 1975 game of Cherry Hill. It's going to be about this, as bad as that. This, like, it could be rough. Let's see what the sorcerer has in store. And it would just go on like that for, like, hours. hours. Just hours. We should totally just, we should totally at some point get a, like, get, like, a, a video on online of like an actual play see if anybody would let us do this and just make commentary through the entire thing like commentators i, I 
love it because at some parts, some has to just like just overblow something, like just like the rolling ones all night, and then they they want to make and scream and like step up and like throw a tantrum out of the table and it's like it's like that finally got to him that that cool temper eating it looks like they come apart yeah <laughs> and, he, and he's just playing like the ranger or something he made she she made a terrible mistake just playing that ranger just it mm-hmm. was not the right it was not the right i think once they hit level three they made the wrong decisions at level four you know, they, they increased their charisma, but not their dexterity. I couldn't understand that decision, John. It looks like it was a short game narrative choice. Uh, I gotta say, while I agree with it, it looks like it wasn't the right call for combat. No, it was not. Although it did help them earlier, if we want to do a quick replay, back to the bar scene, when they rolled that 17 and were successful trying to flirt with the bar maiden. Unfortunately, that really had no consequence to the game. No, it really didn't. But you know what? That's part of why we love the game. Where you do love the game. <laughs> we're not even going to comment on the D20 thing because there's nothing to comment on. We're just making cracks about stuff because, like, what are we supposed to say about the D20 that hasn't already been said by 3,000 other people? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, it's it's so... It's so ingrained in the, in the community at this point and in, like, the, uh, the industry... That there's whole companies that's just that's just their logo is just a d20 yep of like these colors and, and as and game what have you. as game designers we can't touch the d20 like as soon as we touch the d20 or try to use a d20 there's immediate responses of like oh are you copying dungeons and dragons like you couldn't if you touched it you have to do something so good that they forget <laughs> that you're or you're they, using or even worse doesn't even have to be good it just has to be so like it's I, so i would like at this point to introduce my 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 food theory of tabletop RPGs. food theory this is the perfect time if we had a graphics person that they would like flash this thing on the screen for us um food theory and it'd be like on, and then it would just zoom in on you on Jordan's corner, but we don't have the budget for that, people, because we have no subscribers. So if you want to like and subscribe this thing, hit down below. So the the, the food theory is, is is actually quite easy to understand, and I'm I'm still I'm not saying it's perfect because I feel like it's it's been debunked or or talked around once or twice, but. There is the idea of like, okay, cool. So you're you're getting a D twenty. So I look at you, Gilbert, and say, we should get a cheeseburger. Okay. Let's what do you, get a cheeseburger. Where do you want to go to get that cheeseburger? Uh, I wouldn't want to go to a fast food place for a cheeseburger, ideally. I ideally, I. But, but the fact of the matter is, is that you can probably walk place. And see a McDonald's. Yeah, that's true. That's hundred percent true. And, and we on the internet, various in various positions that we inhabit, can walk into a game store and immediately see Dungeons and Dragons. That's true, hundred percent true. Now this can also be applied to say like, oh well, if Mc, if McDonald's is D and D and vice versa, then what's Burger King? Uh, Pathfinder. Yeah. No, that's one hundred percent true too. Right. So, it does apply? Like we've we've kind of like run it down a little bit. Like that's not the important part. The important part is is that you could go for like that cute little cafe on the corner that makes really nice pastry, like a cool indie journaling game or something. Um, you could go to a little bon mi shop owned by this nice pretty Vietnamese couple. And that's This Night and Then, now available on the Unnamed Game Company. Totally uh, my co-host. Thank you. I was going to plug that in on the no dice thing, but thank you. We'll, we'll, talk about that. we'll talk about that more. There is, you, you, like, you can keep going of like, all kinds of stuff, 
But like the fact of the matter is, is that there are just certain games that I don't want to say stranglehold, like market presence. I guess is a better term. Which I will, I will most likely not, uh, not, not do this rant or well, I'll try, I'll try never to rant or tirade about it. But it is. It's such a large presence that when we say D twenty, the I the it has like Gilbert said, it has to be literally incredible or just easier to just make something that's just rough mill Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. But the biggest problem that's always gonna be the thing, and this is what it is, is that even if you try to recreate the Big Mac, there's a McDonald's on every corner. You can't make a Big Mac. Yeah, it's you're always Whatever. going to be compared. The Big Mac you make will always be compared to the original Big Mac. It might be better. It might taste better. But because everybody's so comfortable with that gosh darn Big Mac up the street, they're going to sit there and go, well, I like your Big Mac. It tastes good. It's an amazingly, like, it tastes great. But I'm so used to this Big Mac that I'm just going to keep buying this Big Mac. Because it, it's it's like, it's comfortable. It's home. I'm not going to try to, why would I, why would I, you, and you can say all you want about how terrible the Big Mac is. But at the end of the day, I've gotten so accustomed to eating Big Macs all my life that I just don't know anything else. And, and I don't really want to try. I'm not supposed to say that, you know, the Big Mac or various other beach home power games are bad. It's just, you know. You made like the Whopper or whatever it is out there, but at the end of the day, you're right. You jump into that space. You're comparing against every Big Mac, every Whopper, everybody who's ever tried to do it. And there's a ton of people that are out there. The D20 is fast food, and it's impossible. It's, unless you're, you got to do some. You got to be. You got to be a Five Guys or an In and Out or something to just make yourself different. Now, however, <laughs> I want to be very clear here. Because this also continues the food theory. Just because there is a Big Mac and a Whopper doesn't mean you shouldn't try to make your own. No. Absolutely go ahead and do that. Yes. The The thing about it is, and this is my biggest pet peeve in the, in, in the game design market, and it's not really a pet peeve. It is just a... <laughs> okay. Not a soapbox. This is not really a soapbox thing. And I'm not going to diss anybody who's trying to make a game. I admire it. But what most people... I get... We, whenever I tell someone, like, I am I design games for, like, fun. Like, I'm not... I don't tell them I do it for a living. I do this for fun. Yeah. There's... There, you say that at any convention, you'll run... Every, like, one out of four people will say, I, too, am designing a game. You'll run into it all the time. It's conventions, you'll always run into somebody. One out of four people you talk to... One out of four people will also try. One of those. One out of those four people will also try to persuade you to join them in a late night playtest. And sometimes you just like that. You know, they seem to be really cool, so you'd say, "Yeah, sure, I'll join you at ten o'clock tonight and sit at your table and play with you." Because and you get there. what? And you get there, and and you get there, and it's Dungeons and Dragons. It literally is because all they did was do synonyms for all of the all of the stats. And they're still using a D20, and they're doing most of the system, but they're calling it an original system, and it drives me a little bit batshit. <laughs> I mean... And I just... It's just a little bit of a pet peeve. It's like, I'm cool with it, but if you're really just trying to recreate Dungeons and & Dragons, and calling oh, dexterity nimbleness, and calling strength like prowess... And then calling charisma like, you know, social, you've pretty much just did dungeons and, and if you're still rolling the D twenty, the modifiers are still practically adding to the D twenty roll. How uh, it's cool. just and then I'm stuck in that game for four hours, because I'm uh, because I we we when you're part of the community, you're not gonna be mean about it. <laughs> you're gonna you sit got, there. You got, you got you got to give it good faith effort. Yeah, and I and. Effort. And I will, and I've done it, 
it's just there's so many of those games out there that it's like that's the reason I just I I actually will now ask what type of dice system are you using? And as soon as I hear the numbers D20, I actually will be like, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I am a little busy tonight. <laughs> your eye, your eye will just glaze over and you're like, oh, okay. Yeah, and then, but sometimes they're nice. And I'll do it. I'll sit there and I'll give yeah. them feedback. Not, And I won't diss anything that they're doing. I'll give them feedback on how the system operates. Yeah. And I'll talk to them about, like, character creation. And I'll give them constructive feedback about, like, the system itself. And I'm not even going to focus on how close it is to Dungeons & Dragons. I'm not even going to okay. say anything like that. I'm just yeah, going to give them as good... Of, yeah, good faith effort. And that's what we have to do in this community. But, like, the the most of the people who are trying to play test are scheduling it into conventions. And they're doing it, like, that's how most of us do it. It's yeah. like, you're going to... We'll schedule it. The ones that are trying to drag people in at the last minute kind of aren't prepared and they're just kind of playing around, which is fine. But I'll admit I haven't run into that scenario yet. Um, but no, knowing that, I because I've heard that a few times, knowing that thing that can happen, if I ever find myself in that situation, my uh, I will bring them the benefit of the doubt and I'll be like, okay, you clearly just start trying to file the numbers off by me. Let's see what they are. Uh, most of the time, they're actually filing the numbers off of 2 or or 3.5. And then they're... Oh, pat that much of the Pathfinder. Just the Pathfinder. Just go for your king. Just go yeah, for your king. Yeah, but some people just don't want the Flame Boy brought Whopper. They just don't. I, what? Why would you not want a delicious flame broiled whopper? I, mean, I don't understand whopper. either. The flame broiled whopper taste is is good too. It has a unique flavor. Why don't people want to try it? I don't understand. Whatever. It's just mm. we are not sponsored. <laughs> <laughs> we are, but we but but Burger King. If you're watching this and want to sponsor us, we will wear the burger hats. Like we, I am not. I have I have no shame. Like, I will wear a Burger King hat on this podcast, and I will sell out to the man if it means you're going to give me some money or some free Whoppers. I will sell out for rent money. Yeah. I am. I will sell out for rent money. I would sell I, out for rent money, too. I, I am a commercial game designer, not an artist. Yeah. I, I am, too. 100%. And Caridwin would probably beat me if I said no. <laughs> I, I imagine... I imagine my game design partner would be like, you turned down sponsorship from Burger King? But Burger King, if you're watching, sponsor us. So, sponsor us. Let us let us write something. I'll, I'll wear the beard. Yeah, I'll write a game. Me and Jordan will AP the game. I'll wear a beard and a crown, and I'll sit here and, like, do the goofy face of the Burger King guy. I'll do it. I totally would. Um... <laughs> We're gonna. We're already starting to run late on this one. Let's go into D one hundred really quick, and then let's end off on like no dice. Um, D one hundred Cthulhu. All Cthulhu. <laughs> All Cthulhu. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, and I mean like actual Call of Cthulhu. Yeah. Not just you know, going back to, going back to food theory. Not just the mix, which is just, you know running Call of Cthulhu and fighting. Yeah. But then you're also going to run into things like Unknown Armies. You're also going to run into Palladium, I believe. You're going to run into... Yes. And, and it's a very... like D100s feel more like a really old school game when you play them because there's a feeling of like math. <laughs> and it's like yes. the, it's not math like math because we're not adding anything, but a lot of times you're just kind of going like... It's, it's greater or equal to or below. And you're trying to just be like, is 55 under 54? <laughs> and then, or, yeah. Like or, you, yeah. Go ahead. You feel like suddenly you can't count. You're like, I. Wait. Because <laughs> it's like. Because it's all like degrees of success or like. Like how accurate you are or things like that. Or you have the complicated systems where you have like a 19, a 16, a 13, a 32, and then you have to add those to your dice roll. And the closer you are to blank number, the better it is. And then there's a difficulty rating on that. I have seen that game, and you sit there going like 19 plus 43, 
62. Pulls out the slide ruler. Yeah, and you're sitting there doing the math in your head, 62. 62, and then the G- GM is like, you know, you needed a 55, and you need, you know, you need a 60, you need a 65, and since you're within three, you 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 epic fail because you're that close to the the threshold. Uh, what? Oh, it's bad. You take triple damage. What? <laughs> This is a game that exists. Yeah, there are games like that. I don't like those. It's 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 just as difficult as it sounds, and they're they're real. the The number thresholds are set. They the GM sets a number. You have base stats at like uh, upwards to twenty sometimes or something, and then you roll your percentiles, and then you add your 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 stat numbers together, and that creates that creates your total number. And if you're below or below. It's one stat. It's a success. But on top of that, depending on how close you are to the original number, it could be an epic fail or an epic success, depending on how close you are or how off you are. It's like the exact opposite of games I like. I mean, I play it just to play it to see how it runs and it yeah. goes under my hands. But... Yeah, no, it's so... the... Those games are difficult, and then the character creation is a lot of like trying to like they'll give you six hundred like you'll get like five hundred points to spend, and you'll need to distribute the five hundred points, and like and then it's gonna be like uh two points for every stat point and three and one point for or three points for every stat point, one point for every skill point. Did we lose Jordan? We lost Jordan. This happens every time. I think this is just going to be a running tally in this thing where we're just going to lose Jordan. Oh, no, he's I'm, still there. I'm still here. Amazing. Uh, <laughs> I think well, I think we'll just make this a thing. Every time Jordan, like, drops out on the podcast, we should offer, a, like, a promo code or something in the future. <laughs> we should. It's like, a, it's like Radio Morning DJ. Any, anytime X happens, we'll give out, like, a ticket. Every time, every time Jordan goes missing, drops out of the call, then the unnamed game co will discount this night and then for the week. <laughs> yeah. Why? Why is the Why is this night and then keep going up and down? No, it's because Jordan's dealing with the summertime and, and where he's at. <laughs> no, um, but yeah, that's 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 difficulty of D one hundreds, and yeah, so when you get like a thousand points to spread out to your character, and you like four points for this, three points for that, two points for this. And you're doing math tally in your head to try to determine how many points have been used across your entire character sheet. Yeah, you start to lose your mind after a while. <laughs> no, that's I can't. No, I don't want that. Um, finally, because um, we are nearing the end, we're really past time on this one. Um, we made a rule that we were so, we were really going to try to end shows at 40 minutes, but now we're at 47. Um, I'm chatty. Yeah, you and your food theory. <laughs> Uh, we need to have that on a t-shirt. <laughs> uh, um, so. What? We're, we're talking about, uh, Diceless Games. Diceless Games. So, I have designed a Diceless Game. It's this night and then. And, uh, it is a game where we don't, we use tokens. Then we, we assumptively just say that things succeed as they succeed. Um, unless you put obstacles or a number of things you utilize tokens to hamper the other players there are a number of amazing games out there that do no dice systems um i hope i'm i hope i'm considered you know at least within the the lower middle <laughs> um it was, it was honestly it was it was a lot of, full disclosure i was in the ap it was it was a lot of fun it was um it was really interesting how we kind of there, there, there was a bit stumbling at first, but we quickly got our head around it just to kind of like recoup what was happening. Um, but like once, once, once we kind of grokked the the flow of each scene, um, it was it was interesting. It was it was really fun, and how like I I don't know about uh, the other players, but I myself had um, found myself answering the questions that like it wasn't my turn to answer or even ask like someone someone would ask you know like player one would ask player four this answer and then me who's player three is like 
how would how would my character respond to that like or be in that situation which i feel like is is a really great way to do that yeah and it it by the time you get to the end like you do you do like feel into your character and you feel like they're they're wonderful um my only and and this is this is as a as a fellow designer and this is something that like I honestly hadn't considered at the time, but like after sitting on it, my only real problem with the game that we played was that we kind of ended up like, sh- like not shoehorning, but like, like we, we basically kind of like, not even like bullying, but everyone just kind of agreed on this one ending for this one character. And it like, yeah, I noticed that in the AP. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, like, at the end, it you can kind of see it on their face. Like, oh, uh, maybe, maybe that wasn't what they wanted. Like, that's... I'm like, I understand that, like, the ending we... Like, that, like that's literally what that game is about, is the ending we want is not the ending we get. Yeah. But also, like, there is there is a degree of, like, that's that's bad... But it, it fits with the theme of the story, so or like fits with the theme of the game and kind of like how that how it pushes and builds itself. So that that may be something that like like it's it's one of those things that like not like a session zero more because that game is literally a session zero. But it's it's um it is something to keep in mind if you all decide to play it. I still wholeheartedly recommend this game. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, and we're happy to give free copies out to people if they want it. Like we just we we, I, I'm I'm from the design I, I'm from the perspective of we put a lot of effort we put money into the game just because it's not selling or not making a ton of money for us it doesn't mean that we should shortchange the game and say we're gonna sell it for like three bucks or two dollars because we hired a really good artist for it we yeah. designed it we laid it out we play tested it a number of times. We did an AP, which we, we, we paid the performers. And for us, it's like, if we're going to go through all of that for this game, we're going to charge for it. And it's maybe we're not popular now, but like if we got something someday and somebody was like, well, we want to buy that game. Cool. It's available in our itch. <laughs> um, but we charge $11 for it because we put real money into it and uh, yeah. out of our own pocket. We didn't itch fund it. We didn't do anything with it. So we just... It is fully funded by us, so my me, um, and and happy to like. I don't feel bad about the fact that we didn't recoup nearly the money back or at all, but it's a game that we believe in, and hopefully someday people see it too and say, "Hey, let's try it." But I like dice. Yeah, I like diceless games, but Carrot wins of the value and the opinion that if you cannot fail in rolls, then it is not a TTRPG. It is a LARP, or it is a narrative game, but it cannot be considered a TTRPG. We've had numerous discussions, and we've learned to just say, we agree to disagree. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it really was. like I, it's, It was really fun, because I, I remember like throwing up an idea, and someone was like, nah, that's not what I see. And like we were like, okay, okay. It, it really is more of like a guided brainstorm session. Yeah, it is. And it's intended like I think I would I would do that. Like it's a good way to build like camaraderie around players, uh communication between players. If like you're not you haven't played before, I think you do like it's nice to do a this night and then game if you're just like trying to build your group and you're trying to like oh get comfortable. It's also a good way if like if you're going to start like a session 0 in another campaign, play this night and then and build your story and then just don't have the ending part. Just have it continue into the next game that you're going to do. Just pretend right. we don't even do the ending. And now you're starting at session zero of meeting in the bar. <laughs> it's pretty it's pretty interesting. Yeah. Um, so on top of that, I want to mention two other dice those games. Um, because they don't use dice. They use cards, which is technically what we're talking about. Yep. Um, the first one is Suited. Um, which is a a game that literally what it sounds like they just use a deck of cards. Um, they offer a uh, like certain like play sets is what they call them. So it'll be like this is set in 
like a fantasy setting. This is set in like a spy setting. This is set in a, a whatever setting. Um, and I bring this up because I did help them get around a, um, I helped them get around writer's block because they wanted to kind of do like a, uh, like a hardcore office action, like uh, the Belko experiment. And they were like, I don't really know how to write that. And I just looked at them and I was like, just go crazy. Like watch office space, watch, watch the Belko experiment again, just like drown yourself in, um, in like media related to that. And they were like, we'll give that a shot. And then apparently it worked uh, because my name is in the special things. Nice. And so what's the name of the game? Uh, it is Suited. Um, cool. Which, uh, is actually my first credit uh, on, a, on a game. We will be putting that in the link below if it's something that's available out there. Is it available out there for purchase? or uh, yet? It is. It's on, uh, it's on Drive-Thru. I'm sure it's on Itch. So we'll gladly put the link on the bottom there. Just send it to me later. Okay, Jordan? And yep. the, the second game that you were going to talk about? It is not one I've had time to read myself, uh, but it is something you've probably heard of. Um, it's made by Eldritch Crow. Give me, give me a moment to get the name because I because I because I'm trying to think of it. It's not coming to mind. How dare it? Aether. Uh, Aether. It is a really cool high fantasy game. Uh, it can probably also work for a few other things, but they've been working on it consistently for a very long time, and honestly. They deserve all the recognition that they for, for what they're getting out of it because it is neat. Uh, they actually even personally like push it and bill it as, "Are you tired of dice in your games? Try try either." Nice, and we'll link that one too below. Yes. Um, the one the if we we're gonna throw out recommendations, I did speak on our here on our podcast uh, on an interview with a designer by the name of star uh star yes they they didn't they they do a bunch of horror games and they actually even implement journaling into their game which is really cool like yeah. so in the middle of like there's there's a, they don't use dice in their games um and it's like they use they were using cards and other things but there's a number of really great games out there but i think star 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 does some really amazing stuff. So I'm plugging Star here again because they were on our show, and I will continue to plug people who come on our show and talk to us because, you know, when we only have 13 followers and you're willing to sit around with me for an hour and to talk about your game, I'm happy to, <laughs> I'm happy to continue plugging with you. Right. So, uh, with that being said, we've nearly hit an hour. Is there anything else you want to talk about, Jordan, over there? Wash your hands. Wash your hands. Wash your hands. Uh, it, the seasons are changing, so um, you know there's still a there's still technically a pandemic going on. Yeah. Um, there is there is the flu season. Yep. Uh, the uh, pollen's gonna get in your nose. It's gonna make you sneeze. At least you can do wash your hands. Yeah, I agree. Um. The Bob Barker thing, spade and neuter your cats and dogs. <laughs> yep. Am I supposed to say that at the end? <laughs> uh, this, that seems like that seems like we're good. <laughs> this is uh this has been our fourth episode. Um, stay tuned for May when we will be doing a lot more of these game discussions because we are designers and I think. Uh, I think that some of the things we'd like to talk about next month are um, I'd like to have a discussion about whether or not catharsis should be allowed in game design or should be in games. So the idea of emotional and like emotional catharsis, like working through your sort of, you know, pain, <laughs> right. like the whether bleed the discussions of bleed and a lot of those things. I think that would, I, I, I had we had a, I had an interesting conversation recently about that where like people shy away from the notion of like emotional gaming because some people these days shy away from it or you know allowing bleed in games because you know it, it can be uncomfortable to see a person breaking down or dealing with their trauma in a game i mean 
See, we can't have this discussion right now because we have to save it for the episode. We do. And I know you have stuff to say about it. And that will be, that's just a teaser because we will have this conversation on the next podcast in the first podcast of May. <laughs> I have many things to say about it. <laughs> well, save it for the next time. All right. Uh, what else could we possibly be seeing next month, Jordan? Anything you want to talk about? Um, a pocket dice. Pocket dice. What do you mean by that? Um, just the dice you always have on you, or you kind of just throw in your bag. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Um, if so, which ones? How many? And do you care on specifically for any specific game? I'm sure we'll get to that. If anybody out there has a very large collection of dice and wants to come on our show to show off their super large collection of dice, hit us up. And the second thing is, if you, we're also thinking of doing an indie spotlight at the beginning of May. So if you are small press and you're doing like one page games or you're doing small things that are not getting lots of traction, please hit us up. We would like to feature you here on this podcast because we want to talk about your stuff too. Jordan makes small games. I make small games. We should talk about all the small games out there because at the end of this month, Ivory Episode 5 is going to release. You should take your small game and our small game and we should rub them together. That's... That, won't, that won't do anything. We'll just be rubbing paper together. But you should come on and we'll do that. Yes. Uh, we don't necessarily need to come on here, but we would love to just you know feature your stuff and talk about it and show That's it off to that. people. something cool. Yeah, happy to. And we'd love to talk about it next month. So uh, for those who are listening to this, you got a week. Get it into our hands, please. All right, you have a good one, all. This has been Gilbert S. from the Unnamed Game Co. And this is Jordan T. from Zone Fighter. Have a good night.